Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. It's September 27th. This is the PMS Policy Committee meeting. In attendance at this time, we have Mayor Sullivan. Seth Birch from EC is here. Chairman Campbell is in attendance. Birch and Flynn may or may not show up. We'll carry on as best we can. Craig, can you do our public involvement announcement? Yep. All AMATS meetings are public meetings. The public is invited to comment on any business item that comes before the body. The way we work it is we'll have the discussion at the committee first, then we give the public an opportunity to comment, and then the matter will come back before the committee for uh, decisions. Thank you. Please note that Mr. Flynn has shown up. He's now in attendance. Um, so we have an agenda in front of us. Do we have any particular modifications that have been proposed since this was printed? Oh, sir. Any of the committee members have corrections or changes they'd like to propose to the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. Second. And second, any objections to the agenda? Seeing none, hearing none. The agenda will go forward. The minutes, we have the May 3rd minutes in front of us for approval. That was the MTP discussion, so it's 34 pages. Every single motion is in there. Really hard to chop that one down, but wanted to get all those in there as required, so it's my mistake. Bart, did we notice any changes or corrections from your perspective on these minutes? They had already been incorporated. Perfect. Move to approve the agenda of uh, May 3rd. Uh, second the minutes. I mean, the uh, minutes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Move and second. Any committee amendments? Light reading for what I'm on. Can't quite fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any objections to approving these? Seeing hearing none, those will be approved. We have the minutes from June 28th. Okay, the minutes of June 28th. Thank you. Second. Second. Any additions or corrections from the committee? Any objections to the motion? Seeing and hearing none, that those are also accepted. Thank you, Craig, for getting those minutes to us. We appreciate it. We have uh, two business items today. We have a TIP major amendment number four, air quality conformity. Mr. Lyon, are you going to be talking us through this? Yeah, this is pretty, uh, pretty relatively speaking, a simple proposition here. We have a TIP amendment, but we always need to do the conformity analysis first to make sure it conforms before you can decide to actually approve an amendment. So the first item is that conformity analysis and uh, an inter interagency consultation team uh, did discuss this and decided that the changes that were in there were such that uh, it would still conform to our our, uh, our conformity determination it would meet it would meet all requirements I'm trying to cut through the the technical language and give it the simple way but yeah it, it still meets conformity so we're asking for uh approval of that conformity okay. determination mr sherman we're going to item i'd like to revisit the minutes of uh, june 28. <laughs> 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 I, I hadn't seen these when i went to the website last week because i did they weren't on the well, just something that maybe we can gently correct. <laughs> well, it's actually specifically, I use the term rascals on page six, was <laughs> in a facetious, facetious manner. I'm not oh, sure that <laughs> translates well. Okay, well, let's, let's move forward to yeah, what we've got in front of us right now. Do you want to we'll, just give me the edit afterwards? Well, sure. Well, yeah. Or at the end of the meeting, we can talk about it. So before us, we've got the um, air quality conformity, and what do we need to do with this, Mr. Lyons? Is this for public release? Is that, yes. that where we're yes. at with this? What happened at the TAC committee meeting last time is that uh, the TAC approved the release of the document, but we didn't have the conformity there at the same time. And so I suggested we would have the conformity uh, released at this meeting today in addition to releasing, re-releasing the TIP. So we do them at the same time for that 30-day public review. We still, uh, farther in your packet, you'll see a schedule uh, for a, this TIP amendment and for the new TIP, but we still have more than enough time to get this all approved by the end of the year 
even if we take this two more weeks to, to take okay. care of it. So I think I understand. Does anybody from the public have any comments they'd like to make on the air quality conformity determination public review draft before we send it out? I'm not sure. Is it on? Is it on the web right now, Craig? It should be. Sure. These these are all on the web. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm not really sure we have too many comments before we release it for comment, but just as a matter of business, I guess okay. I'll ask, and I don't see anybody itching to speak. So, um, does anybody in the committee have any comments? They'd like to make. Would anybody like to make a motion to release this then? So moved. Moved. And I'll second. Second. Okay. Edwards. I felt this Edwards should be part of the motion. So this is you know DEC stuff. Do we have any discussion on the motion before us? Any objection to this being released for public draft? Okay. So this has been released, and I assume now we've got the partner to this, which is Tip Amendment. The actual amendment itself. Okay. So. There are a number of changes in here, but basically what we have is we currently have a 2010 to 13 TIP. And so we would need to uh, start creating, and we're already planning on starting creating a new TIP that would go uh, 14 through 17. Uh, two things uh, suggested a little bit different type of amendment. Uh, one is we have a lot of changes in the allocation that came about due to MAP 21. And then just a kind of a concern about making sure we have enough time to get this a new tip approved in time so that we don't have a conformity lapse. So the suggestion is what we'll do is instead of in instead of doing a just a 14 through 17 tip, what we'll do is we'll make 2014 live in our current tip. So then it would be a 2011 through 14 tip. And we would have would also reflect all those uh, the new allocation from MAP 21, the federal authorization bill. And what that does is allows us to have a 2014 year, uh, fiscally constrained year in our, our TIP, and then we can get, among other things, Dowling Road completed through some advanced constructions from 14 into 13. So uh, there are a number of other changes that are in here. They're relatively minor for the most part, uh, but that's the, that's the main thing that we're doing. We're making 2014 live. In our 10 to 13 TIP, we always have those four years that are fiscally constrained, and then the outer two years are kind of uh, just a, we, we just kind of show 25 million as an allocation, because we're not quite sure what it's going to be. And so what we're doing is just making that 14 year live. It's in the current tip. 14 and 15 are in the current tip. This just makes 14 live. Okay, I think I understand where you're going with that. Um, so the let me see if I can paraphrase. The primary thing we're doing, we've got some housekeeping in here, but the primary thing we're doing is we're extending a year. Okay. We're making the 2014 fiscally constrained where it wasn't before. All right. I guess I'll wait my turn for the rest of the questions. Um, so we've got this in front of us. Does anybody from the public have any comments they'd like to make about this document? Yes, sir. Please stand and give us your name. Mr. Right. Chairman, uh, my name is Todd Logan, and I guess I would like to ask the committee to either amend this proposal or uh, remand it back to the Technical Advisory Committee to have something that's a little more balanced before you release it to the public. And specifically what I'm talking about is the gutting of the Transportation Enhancement Funding proposed for 2013 and 14. Um, I understand there's less dollars in 13 and 14. I would expect there to be less dollars for enhancements. But in this case, what's being proposed is the lowest possible funding levels for bicycle and pedestrian amenities in order to bring the four-year average down to 10 percent, the minimum allowed under your own policies. Uh, for the last several years, uh, funding for transportation enhancements has been somewhere between 12 and 14 percent, and under this proposal, in 2013, it's going to drop to 4 percent and slightly more than 6 percent in 2014. I understand this document is out for public comment, but this is a real stick in the eye to people that spent hundreds of hours, thousands of hours working with the Muni, the Muni on the bicycle and pedestrian plans. And while I understand road improvements often have those kind of amenities attached to them, the, those plans are full of hundreds of projects that can't be linked to road improvements. And to basically gut that funding for 2013 and 14 and basically bring to a halt the implementation of those two recently approved plans, I think is really unfortunate. So I'd ask that you reconsider those funding levels. Okay, thank you. Anyone else from the public care to comment on this? Hearing none. Committee? 
Mr. Flynn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Craig, when you say because of the changes of App 21, um, this is the preferred method for moving forward, is that because putting together a TIP under the auspices of Map 21 has changed and therefore it's going to be a little more complicated to put together the 14 through 17 TIP? Or are you instead saying that because of change in allocations, we need to do this in order to get all the numbers to be fiscally constrained for the new allocation? Well, uh, or both. basically, we have we have dropped about 10 million or more in our allocation. And so we need to reflect that uh, in the amendment for 2013, regardless of what we do for 2014, whether we keep 14 in a 14 through 17 tip or we do it as we're proposing here. Um, it, there, aren't any, there aren't any things I think that we'll gain by doing this early as related to MAP 21. The main reason is we know we have a smaller allocation uh, and so we want to reflect that now. The idea, the idea behind doing this as opposed to a full-blown one is that, as you know, it takes a long time to get a TIP amendment done. And as, as you are aware from the work done on the MTP, uh, we were almost a year past uh, our conformity. I mean, we were, we were in a conformity grace period. We did lapse. But because there's that grace period, we didn't suffer any financial repercussions because of it. Uh, I, I can tell you uh, from recent discussions with uh, Federal Highways, they are very, uh, well, let's just say they're, they're concerned about us using those grace periods all the time such that we're looked at as a group that just can't get their stuff done together in time. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that we don't uh, have a concern about blowing a schedule and, uh, you know, for whatever reason, not being able to get on an assembly agenda in time or a PNC agenda in time or TAC, whatever the reasons are, we don't want to get into a conformity lapse situation. And this will solve that issue. So we're creating a non-grace grace period. Not a very graceful <laughs> thing. <period. laughs> okay. And, and then um, to Mr. Logan's comments, in order to get into conformity 413, because if we sort of do the low hanging fruit TE first and then go to the other projects? How is, what was the process by which this is promulgated? Well, basically, <clears throat> the policy committee adopted policies and procedures that said you're going to spend 10% of your money on enhancements over the four year life of the TIP. And so we're at about 11%. I think it was originally it was 15%, then it was 10 to 15. And, you know, so, so we're obviously in that figure. If you look at 2012, we spent 6.3 million. That's, as it says, 18%. Uh, I mean, if our allocation is 2 million, I mean, 20 million, then 2 million goes into TE. So we spent significantly more in that year. Um, and it's just, it just happens to be the way TE projects tend to work is they're not usually $2 million projects. They're usually four, five, and $6 million projects. And it takes a couple of years to get them built. And so sometimes in the life of a four year tip, we, we have to do that. Uh, I mean, right now we don't have a, a giant $6 million TE project sitting there waiting to go. They're not, they're not in the construction phase ready to go. We have some that we're working on and that in, you know, in the years ahead we'll be able to do that. Right now what we have is the, um, the PED plan implementation that is gonna be working on some smaller portions of that PED plan to implement it. And we had the bike plan, same sort of thing, it's in 2013. So we're looking to implement those plans. Most of those projects that are in those two plans are smaller projects. And so we can, we can pick them off still using this million in allocation each year, knowing that sometime in the future we're going to have some bigger projects and we might be able to harness this differently. But right now, just, just with the funding and the amount that we spent just recently in TE, that six million, and, almost five million, four and a half million the year before, we try to balance it out. It's just a give and take, so. I just clarified, we're, we're still in the 10 to 15 range is our, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, I guess charitable way, charitable, charitable way to look at this is this would allow for a larger project in 2016 that would push us, the rolling four year average closer to 15%, sure. That's all, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Comments, questions? Ms. Edwards? 
Yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to speak a little bit to Mr. Logan's comments too, and I think he hit sideswipe at least an issue that I want to bring up as well is that we are spending a lot of money on enhancements in most of the road projects we do in this community. When I think about the new sewer highway project that's going on out there right now, it's going to establish the missing link for the trail system that this town has wanted for a long time. And that project, I don't believe, is getting TE credit in this document or anywhere else, but it is going to be, I think, a project that has the, the trail connection really has nothing to do with the new sewer highway per se but it is going to benefit from the project in that area. I look at Dowling Road, we're adding bike lanes to both sides of Dowling Road, you know, one of the few urban bike lanes we'll have in this community. Um, we're also providing a separated trail on that facility. Uh, again, I don't believe any of that is credited TE money per se. So I guess I'm, I'm fairly comfortable releasing this document where it is right now, I think we've met both the spirit and the letter of the law. In fact, I think we're doing better in the spirit than we are in the letter. I think a lot of these projects that we develop do have significant enhancements attached to them. They're not really credited under the enhancement program. So I appreciate your concern. I'm a bike rider and a runner myself of decreasing speed, I might add, but uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> be less and less trail to get the same workout, right? <laughs> exactly. Boy, that is the truth. Um, so anyway, I'm going to support releasing the document for public review as well. So with that, do we have a motion to move to release? Thank you. Second. I'll, I'll second. Yeah. And just a quick comment. Yeah, sure. I'll also support releasing it primarily because I know the time frame is so tight for getting this done in it. And while I appreciate Mr. Logan's concerns and, and sending it back to the TAC for more work might res result in a slightly different uh, product, um, very well may not, and I hate to slow us down for a month because of how long it takes to get these to the done. But, but perhaps the public process will be able to adjust them. Thank you. Any further comments? Any objection to releasing this as presented? Hearing none, we'll release the TIP amendment for public review and comment. Before we move off that, I did include, include an uh, amendment schedule here. Should be in your yep. amendment number four. So amendment number four is on one side, other side it says new tip. So that's just for you to uh, keep in your back pocket or post it on your right. bulletin board or however you want to use it. Uh, you can see the amendment number four schedule says adoption by uh, December 20th at the policy committee. Uh, right. I don't have an assembly introduction yet. It's not through the municipal system, the pay system, but I will get that introduced probably tomorrow or get the paperwork in tomorrow. I do have the PNZ schedule, uh, the PNZ hearing schedule on November 5th, so that's already locked in. So good. Um, and then on the other side, you'll see that we have uh, the 15 to 18 tip starting in January with reviewing our scoring criteria, et cetera, and moving through the year with a uh, PC meeting of December 23rd, 2014. This is a 15 to 18 tip. So realistically, we have on that much time, but don't want to chance it. So this this is a tight schedule, but we're gonna we're gonna start with that. We have lots of wiggle room, which is always good. Let's not start wiggling any earlier than we have. No, 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 no. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Is there, is there any reason why we're not starting a little bit earlier? I mean, I, I recognize the tip amendment is not a small thing, but is there a reason we're not starting the 15 to 18 schedule? This fall? Uh, one of the main, there are a couple of reasons. One is, uh, and I'll go into this in a little detail when I get to the discussion of MAP 21, okay. but part of MAP 21, the new federal authorization bill, includes uh, specific discussions about performance measures. And you have to, and they'll have these new performance measures that, that we don't have the regulations or the rules on yet, but it'll say you need to craft your criteria such that they measure specifically uh, does this project decrease. You know, vehicle miles traveled, et cetera, et cetera. It would be, I mean, if we might as well wait till those come out, they're going to start coming out October 1st. We might as well just start, you know, use those to build these new criteria so they're in line with MAP 21. So that's one reason. The other reason is that uh, in the 2012 work program for the AMAT staff, we don't have budgeted a new, uh, a new tip. So we don't really have staff time to dedicate to that. Right now, we're, we're, uh, we have one vacant position in our department or in our section, so we're really challenged to get uh, 
a new tip done as well as a tip amendment. So that's kind of it, twofold. Thank you for that explanation. Can I see one following this right? What, what date does our existing tip and lapse? I see we've got a PC approval of 123.14. Are we at the end of the state fiscal year, federal fiscal year, or calendar year? In the 14. I believe it's at the end of the federal fiscal year in, in 2013, so that would be the September. 2013? September, end of September 20. It's at the end of 13 tip is our current tip. If we adopt With this, amendment, then it would be the end of the 2014. So we, if the tip, if amendment number four goes through, we will have until, in theory, October 1 of 2014 yes. to yeah. accomplish this yeah. work. Sure. So we've got. So it's a, not an entire year, it's, yeah, it's a nine okay. month after what I have scheduled here for eight months. Okay. There's your wiggle room. Non negotiable. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> On it. Okay, so we've moved and approved that. I believe we're now on to the information reports. And we have a draft Anchorage carbon monoxide limited maintenance plan. Yeah, and I'll start this off. Okay. Um, Mr. Morris is not here and he's the author of this, but I'm sure with uh, between Cindy and Alice here, we might be able to, if there are more questions, you can get into it in, in detail. So. Um, as you know, we were a non-attainment area for CO for uh, many, many years. And in 2004, we passed a maintenance plan, a CO maintenance plan that says, here's your plan for the next 20 years worth of how we're gonna make sure that we're uh, not exceeding the standards, et cetera, et cetera. So we're a couple years away from the 10 year mark. And so we have the ability to, uh, to request a limited CO maintenance plan. Uh, and the basic ramifications of that, if we, if we do get this approved, then we have the ability to uh, streamline our conformity determination process. It will save a lot of time and effort for uh, my staff and uh, the health department staff, and I'm sure DEC staff as well, would be my guess, with a limited plan as opposed to a full-blown full maintenance plan. So the TAC requested uh, at their, uh, I believe the board committee on the 13th, to release this for a 30-day public review. We're just letting you know that it was released. And that's about, uh, it scratched the surface of my knowledge on it. Okay, any comments or questions from the committee? I'm not really sure it requires comments or questions, but I guess I'll say I'm happy. This is a great step and I'm very happy we're taking it and I hope that we can get out of even a limited maintenance plan when the time comes because these things are all in chain around our neck. <laughs> How do you really feel, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> <laughs> use well any, any, other, any appropriate language. <laughs> <laughs> happy not to be fair makes this possibly going the other way. Anyway, sure. uh, please keep us informed on this and if there's anything I can do or we can do as a committee to help, I, I will throw our resources behind you. Okay. So thank you. Status of MOA projects. You have a sheet there. The top half is says 2012 bond and grant funding. Top half is legislative grants uh, for the 2012 year, and the bottom part is the road bond. So this was supposed to be presented last uh, month, but we didn't get it ahead of time. So uh, this just shows you a large amount of money in state grant funding that we're using to supplement, obviously, the federal funding and the bond funding at the bottom. So those two together, uh, just a kind of informational, show you all the different projects we have going. They're not obviously all going to be uh, worked on this year, but the funding was received this year. So there you have it. So any questions from the committee on this, Mr. Flynn? Uh, just, just for information, we, we uh, the assembly did approve the receipt of, of, of these dollars from Senate Bill okay. 68 on Tuesday, so everything's in place. <laughs> Sorry, the, the assembly approved the receipt of these oh, funds okay. and allocations okay. as listed here on Tuesday, so I guess we'll not that, that requires any action on our, our part. Uh, no, just uh, the state has been very supportive of our uh, capital projects, particularly in our road connectivities, and uh, appreciate all the support. Is there any comments? So are these road bonds the, the bonds we're going to vote on in November, or are these ones that have been approved previously? These are passed. Are these passed? Okay. So we'll, we could have another yet pile of these things in two months to yeah. deal with as 
well. I think the bonds listed at the bottom are strictly the municipal bonds that passed in April. Okay. And, um, and then the November vote, of course, you write adds uh, numerous road projects, including, I think, 36 in old sewer to the highway, which is big. Yeah, it's real part of the money at that. Part of the, yeah, part of the person happened. <laughs> what am I always say? <laughs> yeah, uh, people coming in or people going out? Let's start, let's start. <laughs> I, I guess I do have one quick question. What's going to be the process for um, allocating the rehab funds within the various Senate districts? Do we have that figured out yet? That's a spectacular question. I don't have the answer. I'll have to find that out for you. I presume that's the old Senate districts that's supposed to be the uh, That'd be my guess, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll find out and let you know. Just curious. Question. Okay, that's that. Do we have a map 21 update? We do. I have uh, thrown this together pretty quickly. That one. <clears throat> so, uh, we went to the AMPO conference, which is the Association of Metro Metropolitan Planning Organizations in Saratoga Springs. Uh, Jennifer Whip also attended. We attended some of the same sessions, but Hopefully we went to other ones so we can get different amounts of knowledge. But as you probably know, the uh, this is the new federal authorization bill. It's moving ahead for progress in the 21st century. That's what the, that, that acronym is. And this is a, instead of a five-year bill, it's a two-year spending bill. Uh, there's a suggestion that two years may be what we're looking at for the foreseeable future because the funding stream is so kind of shaky at these points, but that's just conjecture. So. Um, th this authorizes funding for 2013 and 2014 for, for the federal uh, highway uh, authorization program. Uh, you can see there's a $18.8 billion general fund transfer to pay for the bill. Uh, so that's uh, showing you that the trust fund is not extraordinarily solvent. The suggestion by the CBO is that uh, it will run out of funds in fiscal year 15, 2015. So without uh, drastic changes or obviously continued giant general fund transfers into that. The bill didn't include any earmarks. The bill consolidated and eliminated programs of both highway and transit. We used to have uh, uh, the bridge program, uh, transportation enhancements, interstate maintenance, national highway system, etc. It consolidated a lot of these into uh, different programs. So for example, TE, safe routes to schools, recreational trails, all those are in this new program called transportation alternatives. So, a lot of the same programs are still there being funded in different manners, but they just consolidated, so there are fewer uh, fewer pots of money that are going out. Um, it includes, it places a larger focus on investment in the national highway system. Uh, very importantly is it incorporates those performance measures I was mentioning earlier and targets into state and metropolitan planning. Uh, it reforms the federal environmental review process. There was a FHWA program recently called Everyday Counts, really focusing on things that you can do to speed up the progress, the process of, I mean, we always say, if you want to do something in the federal program, it's going to take you eight to 10 years, no matter what it is. And so they're coming up with ideas to try and speed that up. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that they've kind of incorporated into this. Um, one other things, thing that they did that I didn't put down here, but it, it doesn't really affect us necessarily, but all MPOs instead of just TMAs, and a TMA is the Transportation Management Area, which is an MPO over 200,000, so obviously Anchorage is an MPO, I mean is a TMA, whereas Fairbanks with 50 some odd thousand is an MPO. Now all MPOs are going to have to have a representation by providers of public transportation on their policy committee. We have that representation by virtue of the mayor sitting on the policy committee represents that department obviously so but other other uh, MPOs that didn't have that in the past will have to add that now so um, uh, the second page there where it talks about I said merging uh, the transportation enhancements program uh, with safe routes recreational trace trails scenic byways etc it's got a question there I can see Mr. Mr. Chairman Matt so I'm a little perplexed and maybe don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure it'll be more perplexed as I go on. So we've merged several things together, and we're still calling it TE or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did the allocation to AMATs drop, or 
are we just are we just putting these things together and then dispersing them back out again? Well, in, in, a, in a couple of slides, I'll show you the, the the dollar figures nationwide. But basically, my my take on it is, while the dollar figures increased nationwide, mm -hmm. they didn't increase very much, right. and so they may not exactly have kept up with inflation, such that. Uh, again, it went up, but it didn't quite go up enough to to quite meet everything. And again, as I said, there's a more there's a bigger emphasis now on national highway system, and so that would be something that's going to the state as opposed to the muni. I don't have the breakdown of the funds coming into the state and how that filters out into all the different categories and F mats versus A mats and all that sort of stuff. I don't think we have that yet. I certainly don't have it. Uh, can, can I take a small swing at this? Please. See if I can add to the help here. I think what's happened is we've got a pie. It's, I, I thought it was a little bit smaller. Craig's a little bigger. But the pie is, I think, close to the same size. Right. But what's happened is, in the past, we had numerous silos within that funding category that money was directed to. The, the number of silos has shrunk dramatically. But what has happened is that they've forced a lot of money into the national highway system. And so basically, when the state of Alaska used to get $10, we used to put, say, $2 into the national highway system. The remaining $8 was then jammed through kind of our state filter and a certain percentage spit out to the MPOs. Mm -hmm. Now what's happening is the feds have said, now your $10, you're going to put $6 into the NHS. And so now the state of Alaska has that $4 to distribute down into its system. And so the MPOs, as Craig said, Fairbanks isn't really going to be the same stature of an MPO as Anchorage is anymore. We're basically going back, back to one MPO type of Don't tell Fairbanks that. Well, <laughs> they may survive on grandfather rights or some other thing, but essentially they're not going to be in the funding stream as an MPO, like or a transportation area, or whatever we're calling it now. But I think the, the bottom line is that by pushing more money into the national highway system, the other programs are just seeing a proportional decrease because there's less money going into that side of the silo. So to continue on TE there, it removes the 10% TE set aside at the state level. Uh, so we, we currently still would have our uh, AMATS policy that says 10 to 15% for transportation enhancements. Um, as I mentioned, several changes to expedite project delivery. Uh, there, was, there have been some suggestions of a tiering system of MPOs and would eliminate some of those smaller MPOs, but they didn't do any of that in this, so those would all stay the same. Uh, the next page shows you the funding line, and you can see 53 billion in 2011, 51, down to 52, down to 52 in 2014. So it's it's a little smaller in 2011, so that's part of it, but uh, that's surface transportation. Transportation planning funds, it, it went up a little bit, but again, have some of that uh, not keep keep not quite keeping track with inflation sort of thing. So, um, and then there's highway transit funding down below. So you can look at that. The total annual average comparison shows that we under T21 is 34.1 million and change, up to 50, and then up to 52 in Map 21. So, not a giant leap, which is understandable considering the funds available. Uh, next page talks about the performance-based planning, and this is something that uh, obviously we do that at the municipality here, and so this is something they're instituting at a national level as well, talking about uh, your plans, your, your long-range plans, and your tips must be developed through a performance-based, driven, an outcome-based approach. Uh, have to establish and use performance-based approach to support seven national goals. They're listed there, safety, infrastructure, condition, congestion, uh, reduction, so and so forth. It says MPOs will establish targets in coordination with the state and providers of public transportation to ensure consistency, and those targets should be no later established no later than 180 days after the state or the public transportation providers establish those targets. We're told that those uh, guidelines are supposed to be released somewhere around October 1st. Those are just going to be guidelines. At some point further down the road, there will be rulemaking and all that sort of stuff. Not sure when we'll get the nuts and bolts of it, but at some point out after that, we will have to start uh, really nailing down which measures we're going to utilize and how we're going to measure them and things of that nature. So uh, if you 
turn to the next page, you can see the NHS performance program and those measures to assess. These are listed in the bill, and these are for the state to measure because obviously they're NHS. So it's about condition of pavement, condition of bridges, performance of the NHS, um, so on and so forth. Those are, again, it's a state level. We don't control the NHS, so we would be measuring that. But good luck on uh, those measures of interstate performance. Uh, the next page shows some HSIP measures, some CMAC measures, and this new national freight movement uh, uh, measures to assess. Um, uh, turn over to the next page. Again, we're talking about what we have to do at the MPO level and for the TIP. So, so I have to include a description of performance measures and targets and system performance that evaluate the condition of performances with respect to those targets. The TIP shall contain projects consistent with the current plan. We already do that anyway, and then reflect the investment priorities in the plan and be designed to make progress towards achieving those uh, performance measure targets. So we're getting, uh, wanting to make sure that we're building things that measure what we want to do. So for so long, it's been a case of, well, we built this road, but did it do what we wanted it to do? And there has been some after the fact measuring, but not a whole lot. So this is going to be tying it down a little closer. Um, and then the last page talking about the continuing resolution that was just passed on September 20th. It's a six month continuing resolution which provides funding through March 27th. Uh, it did not fund the trust fund at MAP 21 levels. Uh, the transit was also supposed to be at a 0.6 increase in MAP 21 and 0.6% uh, increase. So it didn't fund them at those, it basically funded them, funded them at 2012 levels. I'm not sure how that's all going to shake out in terms of whether what we show on the tip right now is uh, the right number. I'm assuming that uh, DOT headquarters created that with that idea in mind, but we haven't quite got down to that level right now. So that's a quick version of MAP 21. There's a, I mean, we have the bill, we have the thick bill as per usual, but the, the measures, the goals, the guidelines, the rules, that's still yet to come out. So uh, we have a lot to do in the next year with figured out performance measures and working on our criteria so they a tip criteria so they measure them and all that sort of stuff as we develop a new tip. So happy to attempt to answer questions. I'm sure there'll be a few. Mr. Flint. Better you than me. <laughs> Edwards? Well I've got a few then. Um, <laughs> just to keep the thing. What uh, what effects do we know are going to be coming our way as an MPO as far as the administration of this body, the funding to this body, or anything else from a, from an administrative side, not from a construction project side. Do we have any additional STIP requirements, any additional programs that we're going to have to implement or, or deconstruct? Or uh, For the MPO, the main thing we're going to have to tackle is, is the performance measures as they relate to the plan and the TIP. So when we work on the criteria, which we do every time we do a new TIP, We'll have to look at those in, in light of new performance measures. Uh, Got that part, but I mean, structurally, you're not anticipating any change in how he makes those business. We're not going to be required to do a, a tip amendment every six months as part of the new program. We're not nope. going to be required to expand or contract the length nope. of our tips, nope. change our fiscal constraints. All of that will stay the same. Okay. So. Yeah, I think the guidelines and targets are going to be a crucial component, and those things have not been set nationally or at the state level, and it's something as the Department of Transportation we're pretty interested in. Um, we've got, as Mr. Flynn alluded to, maybe a little different interstate perception than other states do, and uh, how those performance measures and targets are set up are going to be very important to this state, and as they're reflecting on down to the MPO as well. So. Yeah very vigilant and that stuff is set up. Thank you for your presentation. I guess we'll stand by as news develops. I'm sure we'll get it. Does anybody from the committee have any other comments they'd like to make? Mr. Flynn. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's been amazingly quiet today. No, I guess I could say I am also, I didn't say this when we, we talked about the limited maintenance plan, but I'm also very happy to see the limited plan moving forward. I think it's a, it'll be a good thing. Great. Okay. I've talked enough today. Um, Pardon me. Yes, ma'am? Were you going to ask the public for comment on MAP 21? On the presentation? Yes. Informational presentation? Well, 
Try and get for it. We can wing it. Okay. Just Does anybody from the public have any questions that they'd like to ask of Mr. Lines or anybody else here on the Map 21 presentation? Okay. Well handled. Before we adjourn, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Yeah, hopefully I just ask the body's leave to uh, gently amend my, my comment on the six minutes. <laughs> Wanted to underline the word rascal. <laughs> <laughs> no bullets, sir. Okay. Can you which paragraph? We're on page six of the June twenty-eight minutes. Right. Um, third paragraph. Rascals. I think we can just eliminate those oh, rascals. Yes, definitely. <laughs> that was that was supposed Wait, to be. Hard. We all missed that. One. <laughs> yes, we did. Well, I just went over that. I'm, I'm sure I said it, <laughs> but it doesn't really need to be in the minutes. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. I think we'll just let that happen. Okay, with that, unless there's any objections, we're going to adjourn this meeting. Are you good? Adjourn. Okay.